All right, back in the backyard for another interview, and our, our guest just keeps stepping it up. Now we have Mike Dempster from DNA Plumbing. He brought us DNA hoodies for everyone. And I guess for this, for the podcast, we have to do a little bit of described audio because Dustin and Lund are sitting on toilets right now. Uh, pretty pretty nice ones. I'm guessing I'm guessing they're for sale. So if you if you like what you see, or I guess if you're just listening, if you like what you hear, uh, it looks like Dustin. You look right at home. I mean, yeah, Dams. Can I get the model number on this one? That's a uh, contract four seven two two. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Perfect. We got that on video. And I mean, this podcast goes in the toilet anyways. So we thought, let's just start there. So Mike, thanks for coming. Thank you to you and, and DNA Plumbing for sponsoring this episode and, and hanging out in the backyard with us. Yeah, thanks for having us. It uh, it's kind of neat. It's the first kind of venture we've done in the the podcast world. We're maybe a little late to the party on that kind of thing, but uh, the Odier podcast seemed like the best place to start. Yeah, you start at the bottom and <laughs> and work your way up. So, <laughs> so first off, you know we we talk a lot about supporting local, and of course, when we say that, we think going to a local restaurant or even a local clothing store. But it's important too to support the local companies like DNA Plumbing. You know all the trades companies and stuff. So just to start off, tell us a little bit about DNA. DNA, uh, where you guys are, what you guys do. Yeah, so we're uh, we're in Sylvan Lake, so we serve all of Central Alberta. Actually, even more so right now, we got jobs in in Golden and in Bonneville, so we're we're venturing out. But uh, actually, a couple weeks from now is our our ten year. So we're we started May fifteenth, uh, twenty eleven, and started with five or six guys, uh, two local owners, and. We've been kind of plumbing away mostly at the beginning, mostly residential, new construction. Um, obviously branched into different aspects of plumbing to to maintain business. But yeah, we just kind of, you know, maybe we're a little bit out of the radar, a little bit tucked away, but we do service quite a bit of the Red Deer's new home construction market for sure. And we're, we're going to get into, pl- this is going to be a really nice informative interview. We're going to get into the plumbing tips and all that. But first we'll talk about too, between DNA and yourself, a ton of community involvement there. You are the man who revived the Red Deer Rustlers, you know, and revived Dustin and Lund's hockey careers as well. So we won't spend too much time on that, but, you know, DNA was behind that as well in the first year and and sponsoring the team and, and bringing them. But that was a ton of work for you, you know, but uh, obviously probably pretty rewarding and, and a great way to get out in the community and relive your glory days. Well, there wasn't very any glory days, <laughs> so I had to create a hockey team, so I keep playing. Uh, and these two lasted one season till it got to have to do extra work and then it was then it was over for them yeah i was going bankrupt at stride physio so <laughs> yeah. i had to quit sponsor drop yeah. I, I thought i'd go out on top you know get, playing fourth line four minutes a game uh i thought it doesn't get any better than this so i i had a blast uh, thanks for thanks for bringing back the red deer wrestlers and i often have like you know obviously with late coach scott i find myself laughing to the funniest to me i'm probably funny to you I wake up sometimes out of the blue and I'm just like, Lund, you furnace face. <laughs> like, Sit down. Yeah. Lund, why is your face so red? You've played three shifts yeah. tonight. I think I had more ice time than you just because I did the intermission games out there all the time, the shootout. Yeah, but I had more fun. Yeah, you I did. Was, Ted, I was, more fun Ted, I was, I I was a glue guy. I was the yeah. guy that just kept everyone loose. Because your ass was stuck to the bench. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was I was the guy that just that, that opened the doors, gave the players the sticks, and uh, and really encouraged us to, uh, what did we get that year? Second place? Second place finish? Yeah, we were second in the regular season, which is pretty cool for a And up franchise. until January, I think you had more goals than Kyle Pass. We did, yeah. yeah. And then I, then I he had could, the same amount of goals as Kyle Pess. Yeah. And then he came over some lots of six one night, and I think that I, yeah. that that, uh, <laughs> that ended his slump. So, no, oh, that was that was so much fun, and just goes to show you how much of a community guy. You had a whole lot of business behind our, our team there, and and me and Lundy were one year wonders, but you still got this thing going. Hopefully, post pandemic, so certainly cool to see. Yeah, it's it's been fun. It's obviously it was more work than any of us really anticipated, but. Uh, you know, it was something that Red Deer hasn't had. Um, definitely something that hasn't been around for a while. And we figured what better time to start and keep a couple of the guys. There's obviously a good hockey market for players in Red Deer. And once your your real dream is done, why not spend a couple more years uh, riding bus? <laughs> well, it's been great networking, right? We had Jarrett Smith, Unparalleled, who, who made the hoodies we're wearing right now from DNA. And you meet a lot of great people in the community too. And I think, you know, this podcast is 
in a lot of ways stemmed from that because a lot of our a lot of our partners and, and the people who listen and support us are, are all from the wrestlers so it's been pretty cool i know uh my time as a general manager or whatever you want to call it was tumultuous at best yeah ted go get me a granola bar from the oh, concession yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we might have had the longest four person or five person board meeting in in recorded history yeah and yeah. i think the the basis of the end of it was that ted would not want to play acdc <laughs> And I think Dustin wanted to play ACDC, yeah, it was. <laughs> and that was it. I want to say there's more to it than that, but there really, I don't know if there was. So I can't remember. Did we play ACDC or not? Uh, yeah, I think so. So Dustin won that, <laughs> yeah. that argument then. I don't even know if it was Dustin, but yeah, no. So yeah, that was a great time. And, you know, we'll shift back now to, to DNA and, you know, the pandemic's gone on now. What are we... Oh, 13, 14 months almost. So luckily it was great to see, you know, for those service industries to keep going and stuff. But how has that changed too? Because I know, I think it was probably April or May last year, we had an electrician over and it was kind of weird. And, you know, he was talking about, it was weird for him going house to house, obviously thankful to still have a job. But how's that been for you guys? I know uh, whether it's service work, commercial work or anything like that. Well, yeah, obviously uh, with any trade, you have your, your safety protocols, but coming up to something like COVID, you know, kind of, takes you for a left turn real quick um we had to obviously jump on board with with the ahs guidelines and and make sure that our guys are protected and the, and the homeowners that we're working on their products are protected um honestly we're pretty lucky uh we didn't have being a, an essential service we didn't have the big the big shutdowns or, or the big work from home um we we're pretty proud of the fact that throughout the pandemic that we had didn't have to lay anybody off we kept our entire crew working and that's that's a big thanks to the local trade partners and the local construction companies that, that we work for uh, that they had their stuff in order and they were ready to roll through and kind of go through together as a team you know take it week by week or even day by day some days depending on you know with the, the changes from well it changed seems like it changes out of the hour so so Dems you talk about you know work in the pandemic for for the viewer, the listener who doesn't know much about DNA, what what type of services do you guys offer? We go from anything. If you're if you want to get a new kitchen faucet, as small as that. Uh, if you want to come out, I'm our showroom attendant, so you can come out and pick a nice new faucet in Sylvan Lake with me, and then I could have one of my guys come install it. Uh, all the way to, uh, you know, if you want for any of the service work, you know, clogged toilets. Um, you know, just leaking drains, any regular, your hot water tank replacement, uh, furnace fixes. And then on the new home construction side, um, home renovations, obviously full new builds, anything like that right from start to finish. So uh, even the, you know, like commercial, if you got a restaurant or something and a tenant improvement. So we're, we're kind of all across the board, anything you really need. So Dempster, over the years, what's been the biggest mess that you've shown up to on a call? So I will say that for the last five years, I've been a pretty big office rat, but <laughs> when I was on the tools and obviously like I was in new construction mostly, so there's really no messes when you, for me, when you consider you're talking about other people's feces mess. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I didn't want to go and Cats say it, but, yeah, yeah, like... um, but for me, I had a big acreage on the way to Sylvan Lake on Asplen Road and we air test our water lines obviously for a little bit of peace of mind when you turn on the water and the air test held and i came back the next day and i was ready to turn on water so i turned on the water and i was going room to room testing and i came to the basement and they had probably like a 30 foot hallway and it maybe had a pot light every five feet and it was like a it was like a 30 foot custom shower <laughs> it was just going down coming through the roof and i was pretty new well new i was a second or third year so i, I hadn't seen anything like this before and i remember actually one of the owners of dna now or the owner from the beginning i called aaron i was like aaron you got to get here i have no idea what <laughs> to do and, and, and show, he, said to me, he, he show. said to me he's like did you turn off the water i was like <laughs> yeah yeah no i should do that <laughs> just froze terrible reaction time yeah so and i know i'll say going back to my i have quite the the past as far as careers going career changes for a couple of years before i went to broadcasting school We've talked about this a lot. I worked as a plumber, thought about apprenticing, but just did it to make my make money. And I'll tell you what, like I, I worked a lot on like the drain servicing side. So you you know, you work your way up so you can be an office rat, be off of tools. But when you're when you're basically doing it just to make money, yeah, you're doing drains and, and you see some shit. So London <laughs> if, if, if pun intended. But I will say too, and you know, because you think the first thing everyone thinks of, and you are probably so sick of this 
whenever they hear the word plumber, they just automatically think poop. And it's and that's really just the the drain cleaning side of it. A lot of plumbers don't deal with that ever. It's more it's it's water is is what you deal with mostly. And yeah, I would say our, our most common service call would be the no heat or no water, um, especially in the wintertime with Alberta temperatures. Uh, that your furnace is stopped, your hot water tank stopped. Those are, would be the most common. Obviously, there is a ton of of sewer cleaning calls, and I'll throw a shout out to JP, my service manager. He handles all those. So, at a boy, JP. <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, you know what, there's some guys, even some guys that are in service plumbing that, that, that don't handle it well and they come back and they, you know, they got to go home and change and they're, but it's, it's something that needs to be fixed. Everyone needs to obviously use, use the washroom and we're happy to provide the service. You guys offer uh 24 seven services too? Yeah, we're 24 seven all the time. Anytime you need us, um, we will, you know, obviously there's a call out rate and if you're calling on the weekend at 11 o'clock saying that, you know, um, my outside tap is dripping, uh, you know, you could wait, maybe it's a Sunday night and yeah. it's 11 o'clock. You're like, well, you know, you could wait until 7.30 tomorrow morning and I don't have to charge you a call out rate. Yeah. And lots of times people like, they appreciate the the openness on that. You know, and we'll, they'll prefer to have no hot water for a couple of days if they could save a couple bucks. So it's, we're just trying to be open with the, with the chargers and stuff. So shifting gears a little bit, cause I'm more interested personally do you guys have like a recommendation of, of when you should change out furnace or hot water heater or toilets? Like a, a year, like, is it five years, 10 years? It's tough to, on the furnace and hot water tank front, they give you five to 10 years is what they, is what they say. At that being said, you could have, it's just like a vehicle I kind of related to, you could have a vehicle, they, you know, you're going to replace a vehicle every five or six, eight years, whatever, or you could have one that runs forever. Um, it's good to do yearly maintenance, have somebody come through your furnace once a year and check it out, make sure everything's working good. Um, your hot water tank, it's good to drain once a year, which not many people do. Oh, yeah, I've never they're, done that. They're fitted with a nice little hose connection right at the bottom. You just Lundy, have you done that? <laughs> no, I, <laughs> <laughs> no I've, I'm just thinking like, oh, I've owned my house for eight years and no, I have not done. Guess so, what he's doing? What, guess what what's Lundy's the, doing what's tonight? The, so I guess what's the benefit of, of doing that? Like, does it... Uh... So with, with our water in Red Deer, it's extremely hard. So unless you have some sort of water filtration, which is always recommended, it's just sometimes it's a little pricey and it's not necessarily at the forefront of people's minds. But uh, our water calcifies and obviously it's getting heated up in the tank and then that calcification builds up, builds up and starts just pretty much wrecking everything in there. Um, you know, we'll carry out tanks that'll end up having a 40-gallon tank that'll have you know, a foot and a half of sediment in the bottom of it. Yeah, that's probably what mine looks like. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to lie. So I've got a question for everyone here. We're all, you know, mid thirties, flashback 15 years. Do you think you'd be sitting in a backyard talking about hot water heaters on the edge of your seats or your <laughs> toilet bowls, actually like hanging onto this information? Cause I'm thinking this is great stuff for the podcast. <laughs> yeah. right? like, that's uh, it's, it's funny how times change. Yeah. 15 years ago. Oh, I guess I wasn't living with you that time. I was, it was one year out of that, but I, I thought that I was definitely going to be playing hockey somewhere at this yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you still are kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, Probably getting more ice time too. <laughs> I, uh, 15 years ago, uh, yeah, uh, this is exactly where I thought I'd be. <laughs> I, I know thought... Dustin knew he'd be sitting on a toilet. Yeah, like yeah. I, I couldn't, I'm not letting a lie. I'm like so comfy right now. <laughs> so tell us about I, these I lived, about with, these I lived with Dustin yeah. and he spent a lot of time sitting yeah. like that. Yeah, what was, so what was the weirdest or worst thing about sharing a billet with Dustin. Well, we don't didn't only share a billet. We actually shared a bedroom. We had one bedroom with three beds in it. <laughs> oh, and so you going to say one bed. No, no, <laughs> yeah. no there was no there's no big wrestling matches, but I probably I don't know, you maybe agree with me. The weirdest thing, we had a kid from Calgary live with us for the our first year and he seemed like an alright guy. They put me and Dustin together with him and he was a bit of a sleepwalker or a sleep he just <laughs> so he woke up or he'd wake up a few times and he'd be and to put a, a picture to the face, he looked like the bad guy from the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, Last Action Hero. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Real creepy looking guy. <laughs> Hopefully I, not a it's podcast. It's 100% like correct, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we'd woke up a couple times and he'd just be like looking over our beds. And it was shortly <laughs> after that, I think we both went to the coach's office. like, we got to get this guy traded out of here. <laughs> like, Coxie, you got to trade this guy. See, I'm not the only one who does that one. <laughs> yeah. It happens. Well, you got kicked downstairs, though. You got kicked right out of Lundy's bedroom. Yeah, yeah, I know. 
Wait, wait, let's just back up. No, Ted. Ted's never been in my bedroom, even though we do live together. Ted's never been caught. Yeah. in Lund's bedroom. Yeah. Dempster, is that how you got into plumbing? Just living with Dustin all those years <laughs> and, and, and how to fix the toilet. toilet. Yeah. <laughs> there was there was one day. I think we both had our girlfriends down. There was one day where the the basement plumbing fully backed up, and we had to go to a hotel. He bought us a hotel that night. Yeah. And you, and you said you're so never again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna learn how to fix this if it's the last thing I do. You know what? I was probably the worst apprentice plumber in the history of plumbing. I hadn't lifted a tool. I'd never swung a hammer. Nothing. I full out thought I would be either playing hockey or in an office somewhere. And I, my buddy Jay was plumbing, or you guys all know Jay. And uh, he just I wanted to get some money, and it was a boom. It was busy, and he said, "Well, this company in Sylvan Lake seems like a good fit." And it was the company that most of us had worked at prior to DNA. And I went out and I called and said, hey, are you looking for apprentices? And the guy just said, yeah, you're hired. Show up tomorrow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that, that was that. So have you been with DNA since they started then for all Yeah, years? I've been with DNA since day one. Yeah. It is. It's a great career. Like the, the biggest reason I didn't stick with it is I'm just, I'm not made to work with my hands. Like people see, I got the perma shakes, <laughs> you know, people have seen, if you ever see me on stage with just a piece of paper, everyone thinks I'm nervous, but I just have the shakes. Uh, but no, I, I really enjoyed it and just, you know, it wasn't, wasn't what I wanted to do, but I, I could have made a, a great career out of it. And I think, uh, you know, is it still like it's been in a boom? Are there still a lot of people like you guys find you get a lot of people applying to apprentice or is it a little harder to find these days? Uh, it's been challenging to be quite honest. Um, I don't know if it's just that the, maybe there's not enough knowledge about what the career is or the paths you can take with the career. Um, I did a seminar last week with 24 students that are doing a manpower, like a training course. And with that, they get, they go through and they learn a little bit about each trade. Then they get a practicum in the one they choose to do. And I did 45 minutes of questions last week and it was pretty basic questions where they had no idea at all what, what we did. And from that five or 10 of them had reached out and said they'd like to apprentice or at least do their practicum. Oh, wow. Um, but yeah, no young apprentices. So we've been in Sylvan Lake for 10 years and in the 10 years we've been there, we've had one person that's a local Sylvan Lake kid walk in the door at 18 and say he wants to be a plumber. So it's, it's definitely a challenge. I think that there could be some better education about, the career path and, and the sustainability of it. I mean, when you look at the ups and downs of, of, I mean, hopefully we'll never have to go through a pandemic again, but the, the ups and downs of the pandemic where my guys were putting in regular 40 hour work weeks and regular paychecks, the same as they were before. And lots of people didn't have that luxury. So I think it's, it's a testament to the trade. I think it's a testament to the building society and in central Alberta that they were strong enough to, to push through. Dempster, has as the, as the job changed at all over the last 10 years? Like has technology made things different for you guys, made things better? Or is it, or is it just basically the same, same sort of basics that you, that you did 10, 12 years ago? I mean, the code changes every five or seven years. Um, pretty minor stuff in the, in the code changes. But uh, obviously your, your technical equipment, your hot water tanks and your furnaces and stuff, they get a little bit more advanced. Um, you start doing stuff into custom houses and you get into, you know, like a, a shower you can control from your phone and, and cool stuff like that, or you get, you know, automatic leak, uh, like Moen's got a, like a flow sensor that goes on there. So if you go on vacation or something and it learns how much water you use and if it drips, then it'll shut off your water to your house and stuff like that. There's So yes, the technology oh, yeah. has changed. Well, a lot. The, yeah, reason, answer, the reason sorry. why I'm asking, like I've heard some stories about these Japanese toilets that are just <laughs> like, they're supposed to be the Rolls Royces of toilets. And are, like, do you, like, am I hearing correctly or? Yeah, there's, I mean, I don't know what brand specifically from from Japan. We haven't went down the ten thousand dollar toilet route yet. Yeah, you're um, on like a Ford Model T right <laughs> yeah. now. Like, that's a case. Yeah. <laughs> like a steady but dependable. But no, uh, like that. a few brands, Cole or Toto, they have they have Toto's for example is called a washlet, and it's a toilet seat that you could put on any toilet in your house. And then it has it has a spritzer. It's got heated water. It's got the whole nine yards. You could leave there smelling like a flower and. Jeez. Have something sprayed on you. One you're all... day, hey guys. Maybe <laughs> yeah. one day. So, That's question, dare to dream. question of the group: Have you guys ever used a bidet, and do you sell them? I sold my first real, like, true bidet that you'd see at a at a Mexican resort or something like that. Um, pr- probably two months ago, we've sold a bunch of the seats, but not many people. One for space wise, you don't have a ton of room to have a full extra sized toilet beside you. Um, and yeah, it's just it's not a it's not a Western or North American thing, really. 
So have you guys I, used I watched one? Dustin try a bidet. This might also get cut. We'll see how I feel when I'm editing this. But we're in a, a hotel room. This was what it, this probably was like a couple months. It was like one of the last things we did before COVID. We were out in Edmonton and and yeah, I just walked away. Dustin open door. Hey Ted, I'm trying this bidet. <laughs> so did you sit on it the and right he way? I had no it. idea. It was how, like, what way did you sit on it? Show me. Like no, like this. Yeah, you're wrong. It's the other way. Oh, you really? sit on forward so you can oh. control the water. Oh, I see. I wouldn't have known what? that either. Yeah. Wow. Why you sit on backwards? Well, for, for every day. Yeah. yeah. Try it out. Because <laughs> there's no. Yeah, and then you can control the water. What are you going to control? <laughs> oh gonna, yeah, that's nice. Are you nice. going to control your yeah. hot water behind your back? I don't know. Or described video. I've or described audio. Lund turned around and tried tried it because <laughs> I did the same. That's the only time I ever used one was at a hotel, and they did the same thing as you, and I just had to kind of. Adjust myself yeah. so it yeah, hits. That so would have been better because then correctly. Dustin and I wouldn't have had to make eye contact. <laughs> while he did. Look at the. This the, really did go in the toilet. The I wealth of knowledge you guys have just yeah. picked oh, up. Okay, it's good to know. And so I actually, I, this is a question I wanted to ask, and the, the bidet thing reminded me. You know, when a flashback a year ago, when the world decided that toilet paper was the number one commodity as this pandemic started, did you did you sell more bidets? Because like I, I thought about it, but then I, I think a lot of people think about it um, with those toilet seat additions. The one thing that you need, which not many people have, right there, you need a power hookup so you have to have a plug which not many people have right by their toilet so you're gonna have to get an electrician in and you also need hot water to go with it so then you're gonna tee off so there's a bit of extra if you're not going from new and then a lot of people aren't really thrilled about having cold water shot up their rear i don't think so <laughs> yeah oh wake you up <laughs> yeah. if it's in the morning yeah well i don't know i just see lund throws the garden hose through his window that can't be warm so <laughs> how do you see that <laughs> he's in your room yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. jesus <laughs> Okay, let's let's circle back here. You know, you talked about education and knowledge. So, do you have any secret tips that you can give to the average person like me and Lund who haven't who checked their hot water, water, water heater? Yeah. Okay, so I, I I told you the one. I think the the biggest tip, and I could circle back to where where I froze and, and when I, the water was coming through the ceiling. Whether it's a new build or you're moving into a house, I'd say familiar, familiarize. That's a bad, big word. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> um, learn and know where your shutoff valves are, your gas shutoff, your main water shutoff. Because in an, an instant, say you call and say this something's going wrong, this is going here. The first thing I'm going to say is, well, can you shut off your water or is your water shut off? Right. Obviously, stop the damage as quick as you can. Um, the hot water tank is a good one. It's pretty easy. You, there's always a floor drain in the mechanic room. Get a little hose, shut off your water. Turn it on, let it drain down, turn it off, fill it back up. It's pretty simple. Um, honestly, I would say just general, like obviously the same as a vehicle. If you're going to go and you don't change your oil for 500,000 kilometers and your engine blows, you're like, oh, this gar car's garbage. Like, well, you didn't do anything to fix it. If you have a drip coming from your outside tap, if you have a drip underneath your sink, if your faucets are loose, those little things that you can do yourself or typically my guys don't really want to go out to a call like that and drive to red deer to tighten a nut and then have to charge you a hundred bucks so lots of that stuff will work through over the phone like can you do this can you do this and if you maintain that stuff typically things last longer i mean lundy your house is eight years old we haven't had any service calls yet so that's been good well i've i've fixed a few a couple small things <laughs> like oh i i have like and being so i i, I actually am blessed like to have the knowledge of the inner workings of a toilet, how to do all those simple fixes. And I know in this day and age, like there's with YouTube, you could probably fix a lot of things on a toilet just, just by going on YouTube and stuff. But where, what's the line would you say between trying to fix it yourself and calling you guys call, I'll give you calling DNA plumbing. Yeah. Name drop. Yeah, yeah. Name drop. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I would say, that you kind of trust your gut on that one. I think that if you're pretty handy, if, if you can change your oil, you could probably change the, you know, your toilet fill valve. If you don't feel like you can do that and you're not, you know, you're, you don't want to wreck anything worse than it is. I think that if you're uncomfortable to do it, call. And then if there's something that we can talk you through or walk you through, we'll take that route. And if it's something that we feel is necessary for us to come out and fix or troubleshoot, then, then we'll go that route. But I mean, it, you know, I answer the phone 50% of the time that we're there and the other side, our office manager. So it's, it's, I would say call if you're unsure. 
Yeah, I would think, would you say too, like if you get to a point where you got to pull the toilet off, that's where I learned, that's where it, it's, it's less of a, less of a hobby and more of a, a call a plumber. Yeah. I mean, and it's obviously, if, especially if, you know, if you have a finished basement or if you're in the second floor of your house, you pull a toilet off, you put a toilet back on, you don't do it right. Then all of a sudden you're going from a toilet repair to a ceiling repair. And if you don't catch it for a while, then you got mold and it goes down a whole path of no fun. So I don't know if you guys, we got to tell these guys what's going on. I mean, ACDC is bumping now <laughs> after we just talked <laughs> about this. <laughs> yeah, so much, of we're not lying. We're at the board yeah, meeting. Someone... There is there is a listener that lives across the way. Maybe 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 they uh, are peeping in here and blasting the ACDC. They heard, they heard the start of the conversation. What about two? Yeah, all this all this yeah. toilet talk because you're getting them ready to yeah. rock. So last thing on the toilets too is there there's a trick that everyone should do every now and then, right? To just make sure you're you're not wasting water. Yeah. So toilets leaking is a is a really easy waste of water, and it's hard to see. Um, if, if you're not there to hear it fill up again, it's an easy one. I know people have called in, so, you know, their water bill is three or $400 and it's a, about a $12 part plus a little bit of time kind of thing. So if you're not sure, you could open the back of your toilet in the tank and you could dump in, you know, five or 10 drops of food coloring and then sit there for a bit. And if the food coloring gets into the bowl, then your tank's leaking. So then you need a little quick part. You, you could call us or you go to Home Depot and fix it, save water, save the environment. Yeah. And I know I've seen from experience too, the other issue with if it's running all the time is if you clog your toilet and don't know it, it's just going to keep running and filling up. And I've, I've seen a couple of those where you you basically end up with a flooded, flooded house. There's one, if you've, if you have plugged your toilet and flushed it once, don't flush it again. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Just that there's a pro tip. I'm learning lots. Yeah, I should be. I should be taking notes. <laughs> yeah. I wish you would have brought your clipboard today, <laughs> Lundy. Shit. So, last thing too, it, you know, when you talk about clogged toilets and that, explain the difference because there's different types of plungers that people don't know as well, right? Like there's there's toilet plungers and there's sink plungers, and I've seen a lot of people trying to use one for the other. Like, what's the difference between the two, and th- does it really make that big of a difference? You know what? The when when our guys see people the one thing that you can do which is a, a problem is if you're you are pl- plunging your toilet a lot you can actually blow through the wax seal and cause a leak so obviously if there's something in there that's maybe not directly in your toilet but it's down the line and it's a continual problem where you're finding okay, every two weeks I'm, this thing's plugging it's probably something that you should probably get your line scoped and looked at down the line because there's probably a buildup not necessarily at your toilet, but down. So that's, I guess, something to consider too. If it's, if it's, I mean, I don't know, everyone's different, I guess, but yeah. <laughs> but it's something that maybe to consider. As far as plungers go, I think just your standard standard issue rubber plunger works seems to work just fine. Well, and if you're dusting, probably like a, a toilet, a closet auger, a toilet auger might be a good investment too, right? If because it yeah. could be like a pen, something like especially when you have kids, you know, and you know, obviously, I think dusting. When he plugs the toilet, he knows why. But you know, if you're flushing a little bit of toilet paper only in it, and it and it plugs, I I know that that got me out of a many a jam, and still will. There's there's a pro tip. You just said flush toilet paper. That's about the only thing that you should flush. Yeah. Don't put things down the toilet that shouldn't be down the toilet. Uh, like just flat out. That, that's <laughs> a bad idea. No paper towel. No anything else. Just yeah. just toilet paper. You think that's common knowledge, but people still. What about those flushable wipes? Because I've heard both sides of those. Our guys all say that they still cause problems. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you got a kid, you could do what you got to do, but I would, I would tend to not think it's a great idea. All right. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I won't do it anymore. <laughs> I didn't mean to attack you. Sorry. Yeah, Lund. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I don't know. I know you're a big flushable wipes guy, Ted. No, I just throw them out in your garbage. <laughs> uh, that's why you're in my room all the time. I, I I did use them, and then I realized, and then I saw learn more, like because they say hey, plumber approved on them. Then I learned, oh, maybe you shouldn't or don't flush more than one. So that was more in the the toilet, the no toilet paper era, where it kind of had the, ordered those uh, as a as a backup. But but yeah, no, that's that's good advice too. So any any other tips before we, we move on to a little bit a little bit more fun? Oh, uh, I don't know. I think you guys have maybe tipped me out. I think that honestly, just uh, like I said before, and doesn't necessarily, you know, obviously I'd want you to call us, but if there's a local person or another plumbing company, if there's something that you, you think that you might need 
to get looked at, it's better to do it before it's a big problem. Uh, yearly maintenance is always better than 10 year maintenance. It, it just kind of the math works. If you pay a little bit, you're going to save a lot in the end. Well, pretty humble by you to, to say that, but I will say from our side of things, make sure you do call DNA because you guys are a huge supporter of the podcast already. Obviously the rustlers more community minded. And if you have never heard of DNA, make sure you check them out next time you need a plumbing problem or something checked out. Thank you, sir. And you do like renovate. There's the renovations. Like you guys do, we'll, we'll do that before we get to the game. Like you guys yeah. do a lot more than just service plumbing as well. Like people can use you in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Renos, renos are huge. And, and you know, we do have a, a lot of the, the bigger contractors in town, but, um, and I think that might deter some of the smaller contractors that I think that we maybe we were too busy to, to accommodate a smaller, even if you're building one house or you're general contracting your own house. Um, if you're, like I said, if you want a kitchen reno and you want to pick a sink and a faucet, I'm in. If you want a full house reno top to bottom, I come out and do the estimates. Um, I kind of do, there are a few different hats at work. So I'll come out, do the estimate. I'll do up your estimate, send it back to you. You can meet me, do your client meeting, pick out your fixtures, um, we obviously work with a bunch of the wholesales in town that have a little bit bigger showrooms if we need to meet there, if it's something fancier. Um, but yeah, no, we love rentals. We love small contractors. We love pretty much anything you need to do on, especially on the new construction side, uh, we'll do it. And even if they don't need you, they can just call you up and, uh, and chat. Hey, just, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah just, totally. We can talk yeah. about the Oilers or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. One thing too, when you, when you mentioned the sink, you reminded me, you were like, you're the gift that keeps on giving today and you were setting the bar so high for guests that you're also going to do a social media giveaway with us. And we talk about thinking 15 years ago, this would not be an exciting prize, but what you're giving away right now actually is an exciting prize. Yeah. So I get actually two prizes. Yeah. We got a, uh, are they, are they these two toilets? Uh, no, they're not these two oh, toilets. No, Dustin already left a prize yeah. in his yeah. Yeah. slightly used toilets. Yeah. I told you the one that you're sitting on is going to my basement. Oh, so. okay. Um, no, we have uh, a shower head, a rain shower head, and a rain shower arm from Riabel. So a nice eight inch rain head and a sixteen inch arm to spruce up your shower. And then we have a Moen pull down uh, black kitchen faucet. Black seems to be the the color of the year. That's probably you know eighty percent of our upgrades this year are going to matte black. So yeah, we had a couple of great, couple of great uh, companies provide some stuff for the listeners. So and, and what are those worth? Oh, uh, your shower head and shower arm. You're looking at around a hundred fifty, two hundred dollar wow. range, and the the faucet would be right around that three hundred dollars. Oh, so that's that's some big prizes. So make sure to check out our social media. If you're listening to this episode in time, you know, check it out. Go go to our uh, Instagram page and see if that's still going. But thank you for that too. Like that's an that really is an awesome prize. And I think I'm guessing probably in the last year, people have been at home a lot. A lot of people are fixing their homes and yeah. renovating. Yeah. yeah. It's huge. You know, you're, you're sitting there and if you're working from home and maybe you don't see that, you know, the faucet that really bugged you for the last two years, but now you're looking at it for eight hours a day, every time you go for a coffee break or a water break and you're like, I got to get this thing out of here. I hate it. And you know, it's surprising, honestly, how much, you know, a new sink and a new faucet changes the look of a kitchen, but we're, we're more than happy to help. And hey, whoever wins, make sure you call DNA to get it installed because Dustin will not be doing it for you. I was just going to say, we, the, is there like a follow-up video to this when we give, he can't really mess up the shower head that bad. I'll do the connection yeah. in the wall <laughs> and he could do the connection yeah. in the shower. So if it leaks, it'll right. just be in the shower. I thought, I thought Mike said that I was going to be installing Dustin and Ashley DNA, baby. Yes. <laughs> New ownership. Those are, yeah, I would take either one of those prizes. Yeah, well, you well, can't win. I can say, uh, as as like you too. two years ago when we ran our oh, rustlers, our rustlers night, Mike and DNA donated a a shower head and a faucet, and I ended up being the lucky winner of the selling auction. And I can tell you from firsthand, it it does spruce up your kitchen, and the shower head has been awesome. So, Ashley is going to be creating some burner accounts tonight to get in on that contest, <laughs> so she can actually win it. But uh, here's hoping. I didn't know you won that. I got her, buddy. All right. Well, you you and Lund do have something you can win right now we're going to do a contest again so you, you guys probably know and i know all too well if you really like saying that's what she said all the time like plumbing is the career for you because these terms are you know there's a lot of those terms that sound dirty but aren't and <laughs> you know w when i was with a company i worked for whenever someone said that's what she said you had to put a dollar in the jar and i think i probably had like 642 because i wasn't mature then i'm not mature now and even looking at these terms again i laughed the whole time so i know the answers but you two are going to play a game called plumbing or poppycock 
<laughs> so you have to okay. tell us. Explain the second word. <laughs> Poppycock means nonsense. Okay. Just, I figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> and so you have to decide. We're going to go through. We're going to do it the way Jody did it as well. We're going to go through. This time I'm going to keep score, though. Smart. Yeah, but smart. We've got some words in here, and you have to tell us if they're plumbing terms or something that Dempster and I made up. Good luck, Lundy. Yeah, best of luck to you. Okay. <laughs> I've got no Our first idea. word in the first ever plumbing or poppycock is nipple. Plumbing. <sighs> poppycock. The next word is ballcock. Poppycock. <laughs> plumbing. The next one is discharge head. <laughs> yeah, you really brought this to the mature group. <laughs> Plumbing. I'll, I'll go poppycock again. All right. We have blow bag. Plumbing. Plumbing. <laughs> you guys going to buckle up for this one. You ready? Snap on cock. <laughs> I can't even <laughs> <name them. laughs> I'm waiting for Dustin's reaction. I'm laughing before it happens. <laughs> Just stare at the ground. Yeah. Just yeah. you can do it. Snap on cock hole cover. Can you repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> Snap you... on here, here. Snap on cock hole cover. <laughs> can you please use that in a sentence? I recently purchased a new snap on cock hole cover. Yeah, don't try and trick him into plumbing. <laughs> Poppy cock. There's no way. There's no way that one's true. Butt fusion. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's poppycock. Poppycock. Sea snake. That's plumbing. plumbing. <laughs> Pipe dope. Poppycock. The last one, curb cock. What is with all these cocks? <laughs> <laughs> plumbing. <laughs> curb cock. Poppycock. <laughs> so, for the, here I thought we were just going to be the yeah. first one to pee in these toilets. <laughs> yeah. No, that we went. So, for the sake of maturity, they were all plumbing terms. Oh, no. So, I went, I went a lot of plumbing. You did good, so, yeah. Lund, I think, did three out of nine, and Dustin did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, let's out see if they nine. know what they mean. I thought they were going to go yeah, the other way. I, 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 I know, chance I, I, I know, know like anything. half of them. Sea snake is the only one I would know. So, you said nipple was plumbing. What do you think it is? I I think nipples plumbing now. What <laughs> you can't change it. <laughs> we just okay, we just said they're all is. plumbing. Oh yeah. <laughs> I thought I you were sorry, just being I funny. I heard. I, I thought you were just. <laughs> is it an attachment that you put on pipes? A nipple? Pretty close. Yeah, it's a short piece of pipe to join to. What is the snap on? <laughs> In order. Okay. Yeah. So Lundy, what's a what's a ball cock? Oh, a ball cock is, it's when you put a, <laughs> I don't think I want him to answer this. It's just when you have, you, you have a ball, two balls. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> That's all no, you need to do. I have no idea. Dustin, you might oh, know this one. I don't know ball cock, no. It's the fill valve for the toilet. So it's, it's kind of, oh, okay. you oh, kind of really? don't see them as much anymore, right? It used to be almost like, you know, like the. It literally was a ball, like that. that now filled it's in more the hole? a vertical. It filled in the hole yeah. to. Yeah. Okay. I had to replace no, one of those. No, that's the flapper. Oh yeah, it's a flapper. I had to replace <laughs> a flapper one time. Which should be a hilarious word too, but compared to everything else, it's just not. <laughs> I cannot believe those are all plumbing terms. Oh my lord! I thought they were all going to be plumbing. They're never going to get discharge head. It's a, it's a pump differential. Blow bag. That's just when you're tired from. It's when you're tired <laughs> from. You, let's say you have a flood, and then you're tired from pumping all the water out. Blow bag is for you to hyperventilate and, see, <laughs> and just to relieve some stress. Oh I mean, you you started in the somewhat similar direction there. You were talking about cleaning pipes. It's it's a bag used for blowing through and cleaning pipes. Oh, that that's my next guess. Yeah, a rubber bladder, <laughs> if you will. Uh, okay, the word of the hour. One of you guys take a run at what a snap on cock hole cover is. Go ahead, Dustin. A snap hole. What was snap it? on. Snap cock hole cover. Snap on. Don't Google that on your work cover. computer either. Yeah. No way. We tried it today. It comes up with the right term, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Okay. You can buy it on Amazon. Is it uh, another toilet piece? No. I was thinking furnace. No. It's, uh, let's say you have a faucet or a sink that's got multiple holes and you get a new faucet that's got just a single hole. It's just a cover for that extra hole. Oh, wow. 
Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> they, simple. They could yeah. they could have made a better name. So I think before we say <laughs> the word anymore, like what in, in plumbing terms, like is is the word cock? It seems like pretty universal. Like, but where where like where does it come from? What's the generic use for it? If you'd you know think that? that plumbing for fifteen years that I would have yeah. looked that up. I've never looked up the answer to that. Yeah. I I don't know. I somebody I don't know. A bunch of guys were sitting around and decided they would have fun with plumbing. I don't. Yeah, because it makes sense. Like snap on hole cover. <laughs> yeah. That makes total sense. Dempster. <laughs> what, what should we call this? We could choose any word for this hole cover. Well, <laughs> well, we and we don't want people to laugh about it. Oh, okay, I got one. <laughs> Dempster, do you do you for any apprentices that you guys have? Do you just like make up make up tools or make up parts for them to go check out? Oh, uh, like some, like sometimes like the typical like old jokes. I mean, some guys used to be pretty mean back in the day. They'd you know get their apprentices to say go clean the burrs of the copper. And obviously that cuts your finger. So like, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty mean. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Typically, like I know it's kind of like the way that's in my opinion, it's the way that sports have went too. The 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 hazing and the you know the the stuff that everyone thought was funny back in the day kind of doesn't seem to happen anymore, and probably for the right reasons. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Sometimes they guess they ask Lenny, they ask them if they can go get get the like the pipe bender. Yeah, something like that, and they'll go over and like. Like, like, where's go, that? Go to the store and pick me up a pipe bender or yeah. something. Yeah. So let's get one more definition from Lund here before you wrap up. I want Lund to tell me what a curb cock is. Curb cock. Oh, okay. So well, you need some extra <laughs> money and you need to go out of the town. So you guys know that like like that when the pipe like that U shaped pipe is like for wherever. Wherever you, a P trap. Sure, a P trap for technical definition. How do you <laughs> clean the P trap? You get a curb cock. (laughs) (laughs) So kind of universally, cock and plumbing is used as like a valve, a shutoff. So there, you know, you have a gas cock, which would be on your furnace line, your gas line going to your furnace, your hot water tank. Your curb cock, as you could imagine, is located near your curb of your house and it shuts off the water to your house from the city connection. Oh, that's a city connection. Okay. okay. So in like a grown up person, maybe... Instead of being in a game like this, they might call it just the CC. So, so the curb cock would be the one that when Lun doesn't, <laughs> when Lund doesn't pay his water bill for th- four months, they would come turn it off on your front lawn. Absolutely. And so, and that's you should always make sure you know where your curb cock is. <laughs> it always is. make sure you know where your. Co- I'm looking down in the shower and can't find it, and it's out on the curb the whole time. <laughs> in the toilet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lund. Lund. <laughs> I don't know where my curb cock is. <laughs> probably out by the yeah, curb man i'm gonna this... have a look now well if anyone's still listening at <laughs> yeah. this point i mean yeah. that's a that's probably a good place to end but i did we we did learn a lot you know i i know a little bit about plumbing but it's still nice to learn and and feature someone as we said supporting local goes way beyond restaurants and shops it, it's all our trades and that and i think uh we know dna um, at least since I've met you through the wrestlers stuff, right? Like I've seen DNA do some great stuff and you're heavily involved in the community. And for these guys, you know, since we started this podcast, I've been pretty hard on them. Like, Hey, we can swear we can do that and not cross the line. So thank you for coming and giving, like we, we didn't say anything that wasn't a plumbing term today. Double like, entendre yeah. central. Yeah. So and thank you very, for that too. Very on, on point, very clean. Yeah. Highbrow humor. Yeah, and I, actually, you have something for Dustin for winning plumbing oh, or poppycock. Yeah. Oh, what did I what did I lose out on today? I have a, a little award here. Um, it is from one of my employees not using proper tools and wasting our <laughs> hard earned money. So I thought I'd bring it, and uh, Dustin can have the bent ruffin <laughs> championship trophy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. oh wow. Lundy, so you, you missed could, out on this, buddy. <laughs> as you, oh, it's a was, great, you, you sit know, on a throne weight. of disappointment. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> as you can see, the water doesn't going to come through here very easily. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'll, I'll display this in my new office. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of this. I knew all the plumbing You terms. tell them it's part of a Roman tub roughing. A Roman tub roughing. Yeah. Do you guys do any gold plating for, <laughs> that uh, like for toilets or for, for piping? name. <laughs> For an actor, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was it again? I'm gonna a Roman tub, <laughs> Ruffin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good. That's a good stage name. <laughs> hey, hey, you earned it, Dustin. Hey, thank you. Personally, this was a fun interview for me. You know, me and Mike got to live together. We grew up together, played hockey together. 
lived together in olds for two years um have since reconnected after hockey being both back in red deer and and certainly really happy that you sponsored the podcast obviously with dna and and uh, gave us all the tips so thanks for coming out mike i really appreciate that yeah it was fun i've been looking forward to it i was a little tentative about the weather today but it turned out to be pretty nice and obviously you know to you guys have to put a bunch of work to to make this happen in a backyard yeah london london dustin sure did a lot of work (laughs) yeah we sit on the toilets yeah that's our job yeah do do your legs go numb because that happens to me if i'm on one this I is, guess that's when you're on your phone, right? And yeah, resting just, on your legs. I'm yeah, just this chilling. Is, yeah, <laughs> this is where I do my best work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no wonder the answers are so good today yeah. from both of them, hey? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they're thinking so. Small. I've never felt more at <laughs> yeah, home. I never. Just relaxed. Yeah, so relaxed. Can we install right one of these in the Bose studio. Well, Lundy, <laughs> yeah. Lundy's got the comfort height one, though, too. This is this is perfect. Hi, uh, Dempster. Yeah, thanks for coming out. I got to brush up on my cocks, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> I, I I think I, I got to give you guys a call because I haven't had anyone inspect inspect any of my plumbing since the eight years I've been here. So maybe leave your card at the end of this uh, <laughs> this interview. We actually we for those that don't know we did plumb Lundy's house, so oh, it's yeah. a good thing that eight years in there's nothing nothing too bad that's happened. Uh, but yeah, no, it uh, it was a pleasure. It was lots of fun. Uh, hopefully, you get some good listeners out of it and. If there's ever a, a time we don't want to talk about plumbing, and welcome to have me back. I don't know. Based on today, I feel like that's all we should talk about <laughs> now. But no, a huge thank you to you, Mike, for everything you do for us. You're supporting the podcast. You support us in so many other ways as well. So you need plumbing or heating, any kind of need for either, make sure you give DNA a call, dnaplumbing.ca. Uh, go check them out. Follow them on Instagram as well. Make sure you check out that social media contest. And yeah, I think. I feel like we all need to wash our mouths out with soap now, even though we don't. Oh, dear.